What's going on guys? I'm Tyler, and in continuing my series of Disney movie reviews, I'm here to let you know that Mary Poppins is no perfect movie. And as the majority of you already know, Mary Poppins is a mysterious, magical nanny played by Julie Andrews, who appoints herself to be the governess of the Banks family's children, Jane and Michael. And along with her best friend Bert, played by Dick Van Dyke, she takes them on so many exciting and magical adventures that she hopes will bring the kids closer to their workaholic father, played by David Tomlinson. Now I'm going to get the most obvious fact out of the way here. Julie Andrews, in her debut movie role, in her Oscar-winning role, turns out to be her most memorable performance as Mary Poppins, and for absolutely good reason. She is just as... She's just as cheerful and nurturing of a nanny as people remember her to be. And some people complain about her being more strict and stern in the books, where here she's more Disney-fied, but... I don't know, for me, it kind of works better in that way, because these kids have spent so much time being ignored as opposed to being treated to something special by their family. So in comes this nanny who has so many magical powers at her hands that you can kind of understand why she takes more sympathy on them and takes them on so many adventures that give the love and support that she thinks these kids really deserve. She does still have a strict and stern attitude about herself, and that's mostly when she refuses to explain herself or even acknowledge her own powers. But as I was watching it, I kind of got the feeling that the reason she was stern about herself was that she didn't want credit. She didn't think it was her place to be giving these kids the love and support of a mother figure because in her mind, she's not their mother. It's completely up to the kids' parents in order to encourage this sense of awe and wonder in their own children and play along with them as a result, which this family is in desperate need of. Dick Van Dyke, as Bert, has a very similar philosophy. He's always saying that it's not his place to pass on judgments to other people, these judgments that Jane and Michael desperately want from him because he doesn't know the family's entire story. He just shares insights that are implied to be based on stuff he's learned in his own life, and he leaves it up to the kids to really decide whether or not that advice is important. And he also passes on advice to the dad in one really good scene too, and we'll get more into that later. But just looking at him, you can see that he probably is homeless based on how desperate he is to get money from other people, based on how many jobs he's had. But you can tell that he's kind of content with just being alive by having friends who love being around him. Despite his crappy situation, he still encourages the kid's sense of imagination by showing that he still hasn't lost his at all. Especially with Step in Time, where he really gets to show off his skills that makes him such a fun character to watch. His accent is shit, but after a while, you actually kind of get used to it the more you hear him speak. Speaking of Step in Time, let's get on with the musical numbers. For the most part, they are pretty good. I wouldn't say every single song felt essential or really even that original because it felt like, especially during the first half hour or so where we're setting up the family, there are a lot of songs that are just there to explain who these characters are and that's just about it. Like the mom's song about being in women's suffragette rights it feels really unessential because the mom is the least developed character for me personally. I cared more for the servants, if I'm being completely honest, because they had more involvement with the family than the mom does, which was stupid. And there are a lot of repetitive songs for me personally, like Mr. Banks's song about how his family should be run like a bank, very precise. It felt really repetitive. Chim Chim Shimmery... Some people are going to get pissed at me for saying this because it did win the Oscar for Best Song, but every time I heard that song over and over and over again throughout the movie, I just sat there and I'm like, how many times do we have to listen to this? I get that there are different words, but the beat was so catchy that it just got really annoying after a while. But outside of that, the songs that are perfectly paced and fit the scene in just the right ways... They brought a smile to my face. It had that old-fashioned that old-fashioned Disney charm that you just love to see on the big screen. Spoonful of Sugar has a really nice melody and the whole lesson about teaching kids that work can be done in a fun way is a really important lesson to teach and they do it in a really entertaining way. 
supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Do I really even have to explain what makes this song great? The choreography, the lyrics, the whole sequence within the animated bit itself, that was a ton of fun to watch. The singing and the choreography by Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke in sync was so fun to tap your feet to and mimic the kicks as you go along. There is one blooper in there where Julie Andrews accidentally does a kick, but Bert's still on the floor. That's a neat little blooper that actually made it into the movie. You don't get that very often, but it's still a really fun moment. And it shows that even Mary Poppins can get so lost in her fun that she has her own fundamental flaws. Feed the Birds was a surprisingly somber song when it came down to how dark the message was, but it's a really important lesson for kids to learn while they're still young so that they don't take everything for granted, so that they think of other people before themselves. It was a really morbid song, like, as the movie goes on and you understand why Mary Poppins sang it to them in the first place, but it was really effective. I... I felt choked up during that song, I gotta be completely honest, but, and you know what, last but not least, Step in Time would have been one of my favorite moments in this movie just for the choreography of the dance number. It's done in these swift, wide, longer takes where the dancers use the entire backdrop of the rooftops of London to their advantage, dancing on chimneys, going through houses, having an entire parade, using things like their brooms as props for the choreography. They take full advantage of everything they can, and it looks fantastic. And the special effects for that sequence, and throughout the majority of the movie, are fairly well done too. It's amazing how much practical effects ranging from split screens, like when Julie Andrews is singing a duet with her reflection. It looks... it looks practically perfect. I... no pun intended, but... It's true, you, you're you trying to look for lines, you're trying to look for green screen shots, but there's none to be seen there. The use of wire work with her flying, with that whole bit where the wind blows all the nannies away, that was a surprisingly fun moment. It's weird seeing kids at that age in the 60s doing their own stunt work, like when they're at Edwin's house and they float up to the flying table. You have to look really close to tell that it actually is the kids, and that was done in one shot just to sell the effect. And, yeah, the effects, for the most part, still hold up. There are some yellow screenshots, because they had yellow screen instead of green screen back then, and there are, I gotta be honest, there are a lot of scenes where you, it kind of takes you out of the magic, because you're looking at a green screen of their bedroom as opposed to just being on the bedroom set little stuff like that that just makes you wonder why did they green screen that in anyways but even though even though it doesn't hold up nowadays in the era that this movie was made that was really the best they could do so kind of like with bed knobs and broomsticks i give that one a bit of a pass now, as strong as the bond between Mary Poppins, Bert, and the kids are, because Jane and Michael Banks are also played by two really talented child actors. It's a shame one of them didn't live long enough to have a bigger career, but just in this movie, he did a really good job for a child actor back then, let alone nowadays. As strong as the bond is between the two adults and the kids, the relationship between the kids and their dad I didn't think was as strong or as fleshed out as some people made it out to be before I watched this movie, but on its own, it's completely fine. David Tomlinson does a really good job at playing this character who bottles up his emotions about the stress of work, tries his best to at least acknowledge his kids, but he feels as if that's it, and he gets so stressed out over the smallest things because of his work, because of things that he's not telling his family, it frustrates them because they don't understand what he's upset about and he won't even mention it in the slightest. It's an insight that Bert talks about to the kids that I actually realize people forget that about themselves as adults, let alone as other people. And there is one really effective scene where he reflects on the regrets that he has as a parent, where he's walking to his job, he sees this homeless woman, the spot of a homeless woman who's always there, but she's not, and the birds that she feeds aren't there. And it kind of leaves you hanging as to what happened to her and whether or not, and how it kind of reflects on him just sitting there and just like, I've been wasting my time thinking about myself, what am I doing? 
moments like that are really good, and I wished we had more moments like that in the movie, but the writers take the route of having him be so absent throughout the movie to kind of sell just how important it is for him to get his shit together. And I know for a lot of people that made him the most complex character because the whole being absent all the time led to him, led to the very short moments that we have with him being so effective, but it really didn't work that way for me. I kind of wish the movie balanced out the magical moments with the more mundane and kind of relied less on the songs that I didn't think were so essential because most of his reasons for being a dickhead of a dad are explained for his song and they didn't really make me understand him as a character. This is going to be a weird comparison, but it reminded me of what Terry Gilliam said about Django Unchained. This movie is a great love story, but it focuses on the wrong relationship, if that makes any sense. I know some people are going to disagree with me on that, and I completely get it, but yeah, I just kind of wish we had more scenes of the dad and more time spent on him showing that he's capable of being a good father, but not being one. So Mary Poppins isn't practically perfect in every way, but the things that are good about it are just so hard to ignore. The songs and dance numbers that are good are great. Julie Andrews, Dick Van Dyke, the kids have a really strong bond, all give really good performances. And when it's a magical movie, it just brought a smile to my face. And for all those reasons, I'm going to give Mary Poppins a 4 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen Mary Poppins, I, I can't see why you're watching this and haven't. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for the last few Disney reviews because I'm getting really, really close at this point. And be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.